What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. You know, fall is officially here. The leaves are starting to turn and fall here in Iowa. The nights are getting colder, but that fall bass fishing bite is heating up. Now is the time to get out and capitalize on that good bite before we get the cold winter months here in Iowa. If you're lucky enough to fish all year long, well, good for you. I can't. Well, I can, I just fish out of a little hole in a hut with a heater and it. it's a different story. So today I'm gonna to take you through my top five fall bass fishing lures. I'm gonna go over uh, everything from why I've chose those lures, the colors, the types, brands, the combos that I fish them on, and I'm even gonna give you a tip at the end for fishing each one of those to hopefully help you out this fall. All right, let's not waste any more time. If you've watched my channel, you know probably what lure number one is. My all-time confidence bait forever has been a spinner bait. You know, you often hear about the, you know, the anglers and the pros uh, talking about shad, right? It's always shad talk in the fall. They're, they're pushing shad up in the shallows, up into, you know, the backs of creeks and all that. And a lot of people are like, what if I don't fish, you know, rivers and creeks and you know, those places? It doesn't matter. Fish are going to be feeding up for fall. And the spinner bait is an awesome way to mimic bait fish, you know, especially shad like those guys are talking about. You've got the, the actual body here with the skirt. So that's moving as you reel it in and pop it, the skirt's moving, it looks real. You've got two blades creating vibration, creating flash, you know, you can have silver, gold, all these different things. There's a lot going on to it, but it's got a lot of drawing power. It's a great way to find those active fish, you know, those aggressive fish, and get some fun bites, man, they will hammer this thing in the fall. It's also super versatile, you know, with this, it's actually a very weedless lure. With this wire and the blades, everything in line, when you come up over wood and such, usually it bumps over it pretty well. It's not something that gets hung up really quick, you know, if, if you're fishing like right over grass, you can pop it through grass. Over big pieces of wood, logs, now it doesn't do like in the, in the real fingery brush type stuff, doesn't do well there, it can get caught up and hung up. But you know, everywhere else it does well, especially in stained to dirty water, um, you know, I'm not gonna be fishing a big huge gaudy spinner bait in clear water there's other options you know they make smaller finesse type spinner baits and stuff but um, you know there's a ton of different options out there and it's a great way to cover water and when it comes to colors i'm honestly pretty boring white and chartreuse or a plain white is what i throw most of the time post spawn i always throw a bluegill spinner bait don't be afraid to throw a bluegill spinner bait now if you've got ponds or smaller lakes you know where they're not chasing shad and stuff they're still going to be eating and if bluegill is one of the main forage a small little compact bluegill spinner bait will destroy so something like that that's another one from cumberland i had tied on that's got the little red kicker blade uh, obviously something that guys throw in the spring but had this one tried on was throwing it the other day beautiful colors really like the cumberland spinner baits i guess talking about brands since we're on it um you know booyah the covert spinner bait one that people have talked about for some time the war eagle i know randizzle's favorite uh spinner bait the, the simple war eagle strike king i've used a bunch of strike kings i like uh you know nickels there's a ton of different brands out there uh, that make some really nice spinner baits you just kind of have to find the size the profile something that you have confidence in that you like um, I don't go super crazy with the blades. I know there's guys that go all over for blade talk. But for me, most of the time, it's gonna be a big willow, double willow, or like a, a willow Colorado. Let me see. What that means is like you can see here on this one, it's got the big willow there and then the small Colorado. That's normally what I throw. Uh, if the water's a little bit dirtier, I'll go to a gold blade. Um, if it's pretty clean, I'll usually go with silver flashy blades. Um, and if it's really dirty, don't be afraid to go to painted blades. Those painted blades really stand out. Uh, they give a good contrast in that dirty, muddy water. So I know a lot of guys kind of write those off, but um, when you've got a little bit of sun and stain, usually it's like a, a, a double willow is honestly what I go to. So now the common Combos. Believe it or not, I've actually been liking this $100 Xfinity combo from Walmart. $100 combo. Now, the thing is, I know people are going to shrug and say, you've got all these rods and reels. You're using $100 Walmart. Listen, the thing is, I like to try stuff on all spectrums, budget stuff up to the more expensive stuff, because I truly believe you can't talk one way or another and say one's better or worse unless you've used them all. Now, there's some people that say, if you spend over $100 on a combo, you're an idiot, blah, blah, blah when they've never used a combo over $100 or $200. So how, how can you say that? You know, I don't, I kind of chuckle at that. But anyway, I've actually liked this one. Just keep in mind when you go to a budget combo, you know, $100 combo, you're not going to be buying a $500 combo. And I think people set expectations different to what they should be, you know, oh, this should be X amount weight or this should be this smooth. And, you know, so remember what you're getting in the, in the category that you're in. So this isn't the lightest, you know, it's not the smoothest combo, but for a hundred bucks, I haven't had any issues. The rod is pretty spongy, which I like for a spinner bait, you know, a chatter bait, a spinner bait, swim jig, a little bit of a soft tip to it so I can let that fish get it in their mouth and start to bend that rod a little bit before I set the hook. So this is a 610 medium heavy 
fast action, but it feels more like a moderate fast, something like this. And that's honestly what I like for those moving baits. So that's been good. Seven speed, what's this? Seven five, I think is loose. Yeah, seven five speed is usually what I like for spinner baits. You could go down to a six speed, especially if it's a little bit bigger spinner bait that has a lot of drag, uh, you know, pull to it. A little bit slower speed will help um, move that through the water easier so it doesn't feel as hard, you know, as grindy. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit more expensive, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more lighter, uh, this Kistler KLX has been awesome. Freaking love this rod. Was using it a ton for swim jigs earlier. You can see I've even got like a little paddle tail swim bait on here, um, but I've loved it for chatter baits. You've seen it in some recent videos for chatter baits. I've thrown spinner baits on it. Absolutely love this KLX series. And this is the, which one? Seven foot three medium heavy rated for lures up to three fourths of an ounce. It felt awesome. That's actually the Kistler reel on there too. Again, seven speed, that's a seven three, but uh, this combo has felt awesome. Really liking the Kistler stuff this year and last year I picked up some of theirs. So um, that has been an awesome, awesome uh, combo as well. So I feel like spinner baits are making a resurgence. They used to be really popular, you know, in the Hank Parker days back in the day, a man's spinner bait was my favorite. Um, they kind of died off because like everybody jumped on the chatter craze and I feel like they're coming back. They're kind of cool again, but uh, I don't know. Spinnerbait's number one. Now my tip for fishing the spinnerbait is don't be afraid to cover. Like I said, it comes over stuff well. And the more I fished a spinnerbait when I was younger, you know, when I started out, I would fish way away from stuff, two, three feet away from a tree or a log. I can't tell you, get close to stuff, bounce over that log, you know, get that spinnerbait right where it's hitting the tops of that grass and pop it out of there, bounce it over rocks. Those sort of little, uh, you know, oddities when you're reeling it in, you know, fish, might get used to that, you know, regular retrieve, but when they see it bump off and, you know, this erratic motion, oftentimes that's as soon as they'll smash it. So that's, that's the tip I give everybody to fishing a spinnerbait is uh, don't be afraid to get as close to cover as you can, bounce into it, hit stuff, knock into things. Uh, I mean, that has helped me the most fishing the spinnerbait. So don't be afraid to uh, get that baby dirty and chip it. Okay, lure number two. Let's talk about some of the most fun you can have fall fishing, and that is with a topwater walking bait, a spook, a pencil bait. You'll hear them called different things, but a bait where you're walking the dog, right? You throw it out there and you're, you're twitching your rod to pop, 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 and that lure is doing this in the water. Darting left, right, left, right. And that action drives fish absolutely nuts. And when you see fish starting to school, um, if you're lucky enough to hit that from the shore, I've done that a few times. You know, guys in the bigger lakes will kind of chase those schools out in boats and you can see them all, you know, chasing bait and you can throw to it, whether it's wiper, um, you know, largemouth bass and have a ton of fun because they'll just come up and smash it. The other thing is you can cover a lot of water with one of these. You know, it's something you can throw out. You can work it over flats. You know, if bass are feeding up on flats, uh, points, that kind of stuff around rocky, you know, riprap, grass edges. You can throw it out there. You can bomb these things. You know, a lot of these are over a, a half ounce. You know, even some of them up close to an ounce. You can bomb that thing way out there and work it back and have, oh man, those top water blow ups are so much fun. So colors, again, I keep it honestly super, super simple. Um, a chrome, this was actually like had kind of a white belly, but the whole sides of this were chrome. It's a sexy chrome. Uh, this is the Strike King uh, Sexy Dog, truly one of my favorites. And you can see this thing has been through wear and tear. All this is hook rash. This used to be all white and chrome and it's rubbed all that off from using it so much. Um, but that's truly one of my favorites because of the size. It walks super easy. You know, you can be a novice and learn to walk this thing uh, in no time. Great action to it, KVD Sexy Dog. Uh, I was working with, oh, it's actually stuck in my pants now. Not at all how I meant for that to come out. Uh, the Six Cents Catwalk, you know, pretty similar size shape to it. Very good walking lure. I noticed you have to walk this with a little bit more slack though. Uh, but that's in a bone color, an all bone or a white color is awesome for fall, mimics bait fish. Um, the chrome color I'll go to when it's sunnier out. Uh, and don't be afraid to keep the top water out past morning. I mean, fish are going to be looking up, feeding on bait fish, trapping them to the shore. So during the fall, you can have this out and I'm, I'm guilty of it fishing it all day. Even when I know maybe I could switch to a spinner bait or, you know, a jig or something. They, they eat. They eat a lot in the fall, so don't be afraid to keep this baby tied on all year, all fall, I mean. Another awesome one is the Head and Super Spook. Um, truly one of my favorites as well. This is the one, actually it was this Zara Spook Puppy that I learned to, to walk on that dad gave me, which was smaller than this and harder, but um, I had these two, uh, the baby bass color, this color, um, there's like a chrome something one, white, uh, but this is kind of a mix. This is actually a saltwater color I picked up. It's like got the holographic with the white. Uh, but all these are good options. There's a ton of them out there. Uh, River to Sea Rover, the old Vixen, if you can get one of those. I never got one. But now when it comes to top water, you don't need a crazy expensive combo. Again, I'm going with the budget combo that people have questioned me on. Debo, why are you using this? This is the Abu Garcia Max X combo. It's new for, was it this year? End of last year? I don't know, somewhere in there. 
Um, still very new, I need to get a review up on it. I've actually been really happy with this one too. I'm really surprised with the reel. I've actually liked the reel a lot. Now it is a graphite frame side plate reel, so we're gonna see how long it holds up. Uh, but it casts super well. I don't know that I've had maybe two backlashes the total time using this. Seven foot medium heavy rated for lures up to three fourths of an ounce, but again, it's it's very soft. It's more like a moderate fast, like spongy. And again, that's what you want for your top water walking baits. It can't be like a, a super, you know, noodly crankbait rod because when you're trying to walk it with the tip of your rod, if you've got something that's just flapping all around, it's hard to walk that bait. So it's got backbone, but when you set and pull the hook into it, it's got a really good bend to it. Um, it's not the most comfortable rod. It's not the lightest rod, like when you're holding it here. And that is one thing I can say, again, when you move up to the more expensive rods, oftentimes you're gonna get a lighter rod. Normally on my top waters, I like a six, eight to a seven ish foot rod, because when you're especially bank fishing, you're trying to work that, uh, that lure tip down, you're gonna be banging rocks and the, the water and the ground. Um, from a boat, you can get away with something a little bit longer, but usually six, eight to a seven foot is what I go to. Uh, and then some sort of topwater line, either a braid, I like a monofilament or a copolymer because when you're walking a bait, and this is obviously is a plopper, but when you're doing a walking bait and it's going back and forth, if you have braid, it's real limp and oftentimes you'll get the, uh, the front hook caught in that braid. Now you can go braid to a leader, but I usually just go straight copolymer or a monofilament. And this is actually uh, the Trilene XL, uh, 16 pound is my favorite, 16 or 17, whatever it is. It goes 14 and then 16 or 17, maybe 17. Uh, but I like that. Otherwise you go to like a copolymer, P-Line's got that new copolymer I've been using, 15 pound that I really like. You can go with your favorite mono, or like I said, you can go straight braid or, or braid to a leader. It is really your choice. Now a tip for the walking baits is don't be afraid to mess with your cadence. So I know a lot of people go out there with a walking bait, you know, super fast. If you're fishing a little bit deeper, you might want to slow that down a little bit. They want might want more of that slower rhythmic, you know, more of a gliding action. You can even get erratic with it. I know some people they'll pop, 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 pop pop, you know, kind of mess with that action, find what they like, listen to the fish, notice when you're getting the bites, where you speeding it up, you know, to get it to the boat, um, you know, where you're going real slow and kind of giving pauses in between. Whatever it was, listen to the fish and don't be afraid to mess with that tempo. Okay, lure number three. Now hear me out here because I guarantee there's a bunch of people that are gonna do the face scrunch and go, huh? Lure number three for me is gonna be a wacky rig. And you're probably thinking, what? I wanna throw moving baits. People are telling me they're chasing shad. You wanna throw big moving baits, swim baits, you know, all this stuff. Listen, I get it. If you're fishing those shad lakes and you're chasing shad eating fish. However, I fish a lot of small ponds, small lakes that have zero shad. But listen, I don't care where you're at, the bass are gonna be feeding up for fall. Now, whether that's on bluegill, crappie, um, you know, bullhead, whatever it is in these smaller lakes and ponds that you're fishing, they're still gonna be feeding Going on the old wacky and rig. And wacky, the old wacky rig is a perfect way to attack those bass that you see feeding, you know, swirling up shallow. You'll hear them, you know, crawling and pushing those fish and popping up at the top, you'll even see them. And if you notice around a big bush or a big laydown, there's a lot of activity. You can throw something like this in there and pick that apart. It's real slow. It's got that real non-threatening wobbly action on the way down. It's doing nothing. And for the fish, they're already, you know, hyped up and looking for stuff. Great way to get those fish. Or uh, if you've go, gone over a, 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 you know, a grass line or a tree, whatever it is with spinner baits and some other baits and you can't get any more bites, you've caught maybe four or five fish. The wacky rig is a great finesse way to go back through there where you know there's fish that were eating and active to see if you can get some of those fish that didn't necessarily want to chase. You know, you can get the most, I talk about it all the time, bank fishing, get the most out of your spots because as bank anglers, and I'm, I'm gonna give bank tips here a lot because I feel like bank anglers do not get enough love in the fishing community. But um, get the most out of your areas because as a bank angler, you don't have the whole lake. You can't hop in your boat and hit wherever you want. You might only have a few spots. So after you throw a moving bait in there, come back with something else and clean up. Colors and types, again, I'm keeping it simple. Uh, in the fall, I'm not really changing anything up. Uh, in most of the waters, I like to go with like a green pumpkin or a little bit darker pumpkin type. The Reaction Innovations Pocket Rocket is my all time favorite stick bait. This is the smaller four and a half inch. I like throwing this on the wacky rig more, I like throwing the bigger one on a Texas rig more, but for a wacky rig, this tramp stamp is like a mix of green pumpkin, black and blue. You can go straight green pumpkin. There's payback, which has like some purple in it, or 
And again, another good way to mimic uh, bluegill is with some chartreuse on there. That's what their old dirty Sanchez colors. They have some, some crazy colors over there, but that's my all time favorite. Now you can go with your favorite stick bait, you know, a Yamamoto Senko, a Bass Pro Sticko, Yum Dinger, whatever it is, those work just fine as well. That's just been my favorite. And one that I've actually been trying this year that I've really been happy with uh, is the Missile Baits, the 48. So they've got one in Superbug, which is kind of the same color as that Tramp Stamp, green pumpkin, black and blue. Or if you're in really clear water, watermelon, uh, red flake stands out really well. I had some awesome luck on this color earlier this year. Absolutely destroyed them uh, this spring on that color. So don't be afraid to use that wacky rig to get those fish where you think they might be more feeders that maybe can pick up a few. Pick them up. Now the combo, usually I go with like a seven foot medium spinning rod. Uh, each spinning rod can feel a little bit different. So the one that you've seen from me, absolutely without doubt the most this year, uh, is the Okuma Psycho Stick. Absolutely have been in love with this combo. This is a seven foot two rated for lures up to a half ounce, but feels so dang good. I had the Daiwa Fuego on here earlier this year. This is actually the Daiwa Procyon. Uh, I just picked this one up. So it's a little bit more expensive combo. You don't need to go crazy expensive because I always say run braid. This is uh, the P-Line TCB braid in that bright yellowish green color. So you can see it. I want to visually be able to see my line. I always go braid to a liter. So this is a 10 pound fluorocarbon liter. Um, that's what I do. Either 10 or 15 pound braid to a liter is what I always do on my spinning rods because you get the sensitivity of the braid. And when you go, I use an Alberto knot to tie on my leader. You put that leader on, you don't have to worry about the fish seeing your line. And as always with all this stuff, I'll have everything linked down below. As you, most of you know, I've partnered with Tackle Warehouse for the year. So if you use my links, a portion of that goes back to me. I can put it in the channel for more gear reviews, other stuff, everything. So I appreciate anybody who uses that. You don't have to, I'm not gonna try to sell you on it. Go to your favorite place and buy these things. Uh, at least I'll have them linked below so you know what I'm talking about and you can look at it. Now my tip for fishing the wacky rig, actually two tips. Number one, like I said, I always use braid and that's because I wanna see that line. So many times when you throw a wacky rig in next to a tree or bush, you know, whatever piece of isolated cover, you can't feel the bite. Even with braid, it's crazy. You won't feel the bite, you'll just see your braid starting to move off to the side. You wanna set that hook, you've gotta fish. So watch your line. And number two is don't overwork the wacky rig. You've gotta remember the, the whole point of the wacky rig is that worm falling down weightless and wiggling. It's a, a do nothing, deal so you want to throw that out there and let it let it go for quite a while until it hits bottom if you can get away with it and then pop it a few times and let it fall i'll usually do that a couple times and if i don't get fish on that piece of isolated cover i'm not working on it all the way back to me in kind of that dead range i'll pick it up and flip it in again um, but don't overwork it don't throw it in and then two seconds later be pop 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 usually for me it's just a pop pop and then i let it flutter down again pop pop let it flutter down again if i haven't caught anything i'll reel it in and, and go back in so Watch your line and don't overwork the wacky. All right, lure number four, Randizzle would kick me in the face if I didn't say this. It's gotta be a finesse jig. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you would know that Randizzle loves the finesse jig. Dude is a, a wizard with the jig. There's been so many days where he's out fishing me with one of these silly little things, a round ball headed jig with a little skirt on it, finesse cut, and just mopped me. You know, as fall continues to go on, the, the water temperature continues to drop. Again, so many people focus on shad and hear all this shad talk, but listen, bass want to eat. And if they're not chasing bait fish, you better bet they're gonna be eating some crawfish. And if you've got a lot of rocky fishing jetties or, you know, from bank access, riprap banks, anything where you've had good success in the past is gonna be a good spot to look for bass with a jig, a finesse jig, because rocks are gonna hold heat. So as it continues to drop, those rocky spots become more popular for fish because it's gonna be a little bit warmer there. They'll huddle up on those. So if you've got, you know, like a little rock pile, um, rocky fishing jetties, that dude has outfished me so many times with one of these in those spots. Uh, the past, I don't know, four, five years that we've been fishing, he's truly made me a believer and helped me with my finesse jig game. Now, as far as brands, I know for sure, uh, Randy's favorite is the War Eagle finesse jig. 3 8 ounce. He likes a green pumpkin with the orange on it. That's his favorite. Uh, black and blue is another good color. Any sort of version of green pumpkin. These jewels, I've actually liked these. They've got a good stout hook on them. The Beast Coast Hustler Hybrid Finesse Jig is awesome. A little small package. This comes in 5 16 ounce, which is my personal favorite size. Listen, if you can go with a little bit smaller, go with as light of a jig as you can get away with when you're working, you know, rockier, chunkier rip wrap. If you go with a real heavy jig, half ounce jig from the bank, gotta remember you're bringing it uphill. You'll get snagged to heck. So 5 16th is my favorite. Um, Randy likes a 3 8 Remember, you're gonna get snagged fishing rip wrap. I don't care what size, what lure, you're eventually gonna get snagged at some point. But if you can go with something a little bit lighter, you will get snagged less. 
Um, but anyway, this hybrid hustler from Beast Coast has the marabou fur in it, little spider finesse cut skirt. You can see how the front of it's cut short, the back of it's cut short, just a little bit longer than the actual hook. These are the kind of finesse jigs I'm talking about. Not the super tiny ones. These that you can fish on a, a casting combo, which is what I fish on, you know, a bait caster combo. You know, a decently good stout hook, but still a small little jig. That's not a very big jig at all. Finesse cut in the front. Now when it comes to the combo last year, uh, last fall, I actually fished it on this a ton. This is from Luz. This is the custom speed stick. It's a seven foot medium heavy, but it's a moderate fast rated for lures up to five eighths of an ounce. And the reason I, I say this one I really liked is because it's a medium heavy. It's got a really good backbone to it. However, it's got a soft tip. And again, you've heard me kind of talking about that on all these. It's got a softer tip. So when you load this, you know, this isn't rated for lures up to two ounces. It's, it will load and bend with a lighter lure, which is what you want when you're flipping around, you know, a 5 16th ounce finesse jig or a 3 8 finesse jig. Uh, you know, it's a little small jig. You're just kind of whipping it around. Something like this is great as opposed to using like a, a heavy rod that's going to be super stiff. It, it's, it's just a lot harder to do. So I like something like this. Another one would be, as I was just looking over, you've seen this in videos recently, that Dobbins Champion XP. This is their four power. It says like Texas rig, jigs. This is rated for lures up to one ounce, but again, it's kind of a soft rod. Like I feel like the rod's a little bit heavier rated than what it is. I don't have a reel on here, but uh, usually a seven speed reel for me, pick your favorite reel, you know, flip it and pitch and you don't need something super crazy. Um, and 15 pound fluorocarbon is what I usually go with on my finesse jigs. Okay, now the tip for fishing a finesse jig and Randazzle reminds me of this all the time. You know, I'll get frustrated. You're trying to find fish, you can't find them. You start fishing fast, right? At least I do. I get, you know, upset and I'm throwing the jig out there and hopping it and then, you know, He'll say, Debo, slow down. And he's totally right. You know, picking up tips from Randy and watching him fish a finesse jig, I, I've told him before, I'm, I'm amazed how confident you are with it and how you'll really pick apart something. And something I've heard from, uh, you know, a number of other anglers is when you're fishing like a finesse jig, dragging a jig is, if you think you're going too slow, slow down. Because people don't realize, you know, when you have a rod in your hand and you drag that, you know, it might not feel like much going from here to there, but if you've got a seven foot rod and you do this, you know, moving from here to here, you might have moved that bait, you know, three foot just doing that. So small little increments, you know, little, little hops and such to feel all the cover down there, because you've got to remember if it's crawfish down there and the water's getting colder, they're not going to be jumping around going all crazy, right? You know, they're going to be going slow in that colder water. They slow down just like the fish do. So don't be afraid to slow down. If you think you're going too fast, slow down even more with your finesse jigs. This video is gonna be a little bit longer than I thought. Y'all are getting your money's worth on this one. Lure number five was tough because there's so many good options and there's, I'm gonna kind of touch on that at the end. This isn't the be all end all five, right? You've got jerk baits, um, swim baits, underspins, all kinds of things that do amazing in the fall. These are just some of my five picks that I've used and have a lot of confidence in. And speaking of number five, lure number five for me is gonna be a lipless crankbait. This is a lure that will catch numbers of fish. You will catch big fish with this. You can fish it fast in the shallows. You can yo-yo it for some suspended bass. You can pop it out of grasslands. Listen, what I'm saying is this is a versatile lure for fall fishing. And when it comes to brands, you first have to talk about the Bill Lewis rattle trap. There's a reason why people call, you know, some people call any lipless crankbait a rattle trap. Well. The rattle trap is a Bill Lewis specific lipless crankbait, but it's been around for so long. It works so well. It's so, you know, easily notified. It's got the kind of two pointed ends, looks kind of the same. It's got that little fin on the top that you can see there. That's a Bill Lewis rattle trap. You know, if you fish for a while, you know the look of this, it works. That's why so many people just call all of them rattle traps. The thing that's cool about a lipless, if you've never fished one, you know, the line ties right here. It's this little thin, slender, flat bait that has a real tight wobble. You know, it does that. Each, each uh, lipless will have kind of a different sound. This is the Bill Lewis, kind of has a, a tinny BB sound to it, some of them. This is a Booyah one knocker. Hear that, like a, a clicky thud, a one knocker. Different types out there, different sounds, but the lipless like this mimics, I mean, bait fish. You look at that and that looks just like a little bait fish coming through there. Eee! But anyway, the uh, the Bill Lewis rattle trap is awesome. It comes with good hardware. It comes with the uh, the Mustad triple grip, so you don't have to change the hooks out. It works, good colors. Uh, for me, chrome is absolutely one of my go-tos in kind of cleaner water, especially if you've got sun, you can see that reflection that it gives off. Um, in a little bit dirtier water, I prefer gold. I think that gold shows a little bit better. Um, this is another awesome brand, the Cotton Cordell Super Spot. 
cheap. You can get these at Walmart for a couple bucks, check in their clearance bin, but you know, I think they're maybe $3 regularly. So good affordable option if you're fishing shallow, if you break off and lose a couple, you know, it's not a life breaker. It's not like it's gonna be a $30 lipless. You know, a couple bucks, I really like those. Just make sure you change the hooks because the hooks on these do suck. Um, change out to some better aftermarket hooks. Booyah, I really like their lipless. They run really well and true and they have the one knocker version too for kind of that thuddy sound. Of course, gotta talk about the Red Eye Shad. The Strike King Red Eye Shad is one of the standards. As you can see, it's got the red eye there, but this is in the uh, the natural bream color. I do like a like a bluegill or a natural, you know, kind of uh, gilly sunfish type color for ponds, smaller lakes, especially uh, with those bluegill eaters in there, it does well. Uh, there is a red color. I want to kind of mess with red more in the fall. Usually a red lipless is what people talk about in the spring. I've had a ton of luck on red in the spring, but I want to mess with red more this fall. So gold, chrome, oh, and like a shad color. So like a shad white. I actually don't have one around here, but something very similar and one you're going to see in a video coming up soon. This is actually tequila sunrise. My very first time fishing it, but you can see it's got that kind of pearl white belly. I like to have a white color too to mimic, you know, shad, crappie, that kind of thing. Okay, now when it comes to my lipless crankbait combo, I don't like a full super spongy crankbait rod. So, you know, like a, a glass rod that bends all the way clear down to the middle and, it, you know, it feels real, you know, noodly. I don't like that for lipless. The reason is, like I said, you can get it caught in those grass edges, fish it just above grass, you know, fall. If you can find the good green grass that's still alive, I guarantee there's gonna be some fish there. So you can kind of get it stuck in that and then rip it through. If you've got a real soft noodly rod, it's hard to do that. Um, and if you're coming over rocks, ticking rocks, you know, you wanna have a, a rod where you can pop that through. So um, I have absolutely loved this rod using it. This is the Okuma Guide Select. It's a seven foot medium. Uh, but it is a crankbait rod, so it does bend. I eh, eh, can't really. It does bend once you get a fish on it, but it's not like, you know, your regular crank rod that, that is bending clear down toward the middle all the time. So um, kind of like a, a moderate, like a soft to moderate fast, I guess you'd say, but it's a medium power. So you got to remember, it doesn't take a ton of power to actually get down into that backbone of it. But um, I really like this one. That's what I would say for lipless, something that's just a little bit stiffer uh, than, you know, like a, a super noodly crankbait rod again, because if you're yo-yoing, that's another good thing. Um, if you're yo-yoing a crankbait, I don't like doing that on a super noodly rod. I like to have a little bit of tip where I can and let that rattle trap fall. Uh, let it fall. That's what I'm talking about for the yo-yo. Uh, and I think it's a lot easier on something like this. Uh, now with your reel, you want something that casts rail. You can get good distance out of it. This is uh, the new Lose. What is it? Lose Custom Pro. This is the new version for the year. Something that casts well because the, the good part of a lipless is you can bomb those things out there and cover a lot of water. Um, so you want a good caster, something that you're confident casting where you're not going to be getting, you know, backlashes all the time, something that you can cast into wind. A lot of times in the fall, you're going to have a lot of windy conditions. So just a bait caster that you're, you're proficient with and trust. And then I've got a 15 pound fluorocarbon on here. A lot of times I'll go with 12 on these. Uh, I just happen to have 15 on, but okay. Now my tip for fishing lipless crankbaits is don't be afraid to change out your color and size. I was actually talking to a subscribe fishing friend recently that said, yeah, I threw a, I had this like blue and white uh, lipless crankbait. I threw it, I knew they weren't eating it. Uh, I switched to it a little and I was like, wait a minute, how do you know they weren't eating it? Well, I, I threw it for a while, I wasn't catching anything on it. I said, well, have you ever tried this color, like a chrome during the day in pretty clean water? We, we started kind of down the rabbit hole. And the thing is a lot of you know newer anglers will think that it's just a bait, not necessarily the color or size, but I've seen it actually, that's been what, four or five years ago. Um, I had switched over to a quarter ounce lipless and started catching the heck out of them. I was fishing one of the bigger cotton cordell spots. That's their half ounce. And it's a pretty big profile. You've got to remember in the fall, oftentimes bass are feeding on smaller bait fish, smaller shad. So don't be afraid to switch to that smaller, like a quarter ounce. It was actually even a little bit smaller than uh, this one. This is the Berkeley War Pig that I like too. I want to say it's even a little bit smaller than that, but um, I switched up that smaller size and immediately started getting bites. So same thing for color. You know, he's like, oh, I had the white and blue. That's what I like. And they weren't hitting it. Don't be afraid to switch up to a gold or, you know, the all chrome. If you think they're eating shad and, you know, oftentimes they're just seeing the flash of this. They're not getting a good look at it. You know, something with some flash as opposed to, uh, you know, an all white or something could make all the difference. So I know I have done it. I've experienced it. Don't be afraid to mess with the color and size of your lipless crankbait. It may not be that they're just not eating any lipless. You might have to just change some stuff up. So that's my tip. All right, fishing friends. Those are my top five fall bass fishing lures. Again, the spinner bait, topwater walking bait, wacky rig finesse jig, and of course the lipless crankbait. Now, 
Again, this is not the be all end all list. Go out and check out other people's videos. I noticed there's like a big craze now with doing like certain baits of the month, like best baits for October. That's kind of tough because it's going to depend on where you're at. If you're in the South, your baits are going to be different than my baits in the North. So when I do kind of my top five is to try to kind of cover everything for folks. Now there's things that I left out, you know, paddle tail swim baits, underspins, um, a rigs people throw, uh, jerk baits, you know, is a huge one. But like I said, I try to go off things that I've had a lot of success with. That way, if you have questions, I can answer those. And as a bank angler, you know, for example, a jerk bait, oftentimes that's really hard for people to fish from the bank, right? Because you may be fishing shallower water. It's not like when you're fishing in a boat, you're casting shallow or bringing it out deeper. You're casting deep and bringing it shallow, which oftentimes means a lot of snags. So that's kind of why I chose some of those. I try to walk you through the reasoning, uh, you know, the colors, the brands, all that, things that I've used and that, that I would be confident uh, telling you about. But again, watch other people's videos, all kinds of folks out there, um, you know, Jim Bass Geek, uh, Alex Rudd, Tactical Bass, and uh, you know, a lot of the pros, all these guys are having their own videos. Go absorb. There's nothing wrong with getting more information. Knowledge is power. I know that sounds cliche and corny but i mean it really is try to get as much knowledge as you can but comment below do me a huge favor comment below and let me know are my top five picks in line with yours do you feel there's one that i left out that is just absurd you can't go fall fishing without it comment below and let me know now tonight's subscribe fish and friend is my guy anthony reader anthony and i were actually just talking back and forth about some fall baits and line choices um if you guys ever have you know like a burning question feel free to hit me up on instagram uh you know a direct message that's the best way i try to get through those sometimes it does take me a, a week or so to get caught up but i am super behind on youtube comments and i feel like a jerk because i used to take a ton of pride in that replying to everybody and was with kids school stuff work painting baits all this i've gotten way behind so i apologize but if you have a crazy good burning question don't be afraid to hit me up on instagram i will get to you at some point but that's enough for me y'all have listened to me talk uh, enough tonight i need to get editing so thank you all for watching good luck fishing this fall and until next time mm -hmm.